So we are here in the De Anza room and I want to show you the exposed adobe wall, something that we haven't seen in over 200 years. This is one of two adobe wings left of the original Spanish quadrangle from the 18 teens. And we are here looking at the very special adobe walls that we uncovered recently after our long investigation to figure out what was behind the walls. We needed to understand what the adobe wall conditions were. However, we had many years and layers of later fabric. We had this redwood framing that was keeping original beadboard from the Victorian period up. And then on top of that, we had some building paper. And then on top of that, we had some gypsum plaster, which is an interior finish that they covered up in the 1934 remodel in order to understand the conditions of the adobe fabric behind existing walls. And because we couldn't see it, we actually went for non-destructive evaluation techniques. One was infrared thermography, which is basically taking surface temperatures of the wall to find out what the conditions of the adobe was behind our existing fabric so that you can understand what is happening if there are certain areas of air infiltration or intense moisture. And then another method is radar, and that's what people would probably think of as ground penetrating radar for archeology, span but they actually use this for buildings as well for us to figure out whether or not there are voids or cracks such as this and delamination between the adobe fabric in the walls and to confirm the infrared thermography photography. So with those two methods we actually were able to map out all of the adobe walls and the different conditions that we believed existed behind the fabric that we actually saw. So these two different technologies that we use, the infrared and radar, are really innovative approaches to understanding the fabric of the adobe wings. The benefit of using this technology is so that the structural engineer can find out what the conditions are so that they can design for a seismic scheme that does not remove a lot of the historic fabric and also for our adobe contractor to figure out where exactly they need to focus their repairs on. And in addition, in order to understand this rare adobe building, we actually did our moisture sampling ourselves after our limited removal of historic fabric, including this whole west bay of the De Anza room. In California, because of the missions, we do have a few adobe structures left, but it is such a rare material, building material really, that is left standing because over time it's not maintained, it's not lime plastered, which is really what keeps the adobes together. We have lost a lot of the expertise, and so we've put together a really great team of experts, starting with the structural engineer, Roy Tolles. He's actually one of two people in the world who has actually done a PhD on seismic strengthening of adobe structures. And we have Pat Taylor, who is our adobe contractor, and he has numerous years, I think over 30 years of experience on adobe structures. He lives in an adobe, he's worked on adobes all his life, and he's coming from New Mexico and he has brought out a crew with him who are really experienced in the procedures of repairing adobe, everything from basal erosion, which is near the base of the adobe walls, where moisture has deteriorated the adobe units, to fixing the cracks, unit replacements where it's necessary to stitch them together. So we actually have to remove a little bit of the historic fabric, but it's very selective and it's very minimal, but it's enough so that it reintegrates structurally the wall back together so that they are one again. So you would remove one little area here and you would install a new Adobe unit. The seismic scheme for reinforcing the adobe walls is using center core drilling with stainless steel rods that are then tied into the new structural roof framing. 
And as part of our rehabilitation project here at Building 50, we decided that it was very important to document all of the existing fabric, historic fabric, while everything was coming off. The reason why this is really important from a preservation perspective, we always want to document the existing condition of an original or found object or building for future generations. And so as part of this effort, we decided to do photogrammetry, laser scanning, which is really just plotting points on a what we call a point cloud that then will provide you with a 3D model as well. And then we use digital photography, hand measured drawings by our interns, and also digitizing those drawings into AutoCAD drawings so that we would have a document for future generations to use.